Being able to conditionally show or hide content is a common requirement for advanced websites. There are many types of conditions. Perhaps you only want to show content on certain custom post types during the holiday to certain users or user roles if the visitor is on mobile, if the visitor has an old browser version, or if they click on a button. Dynamic Content for Elementor has a visibility extension that supports all of these types of conditions and many more, including a custom PHP option. Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360, and in this video tutorial, I want to show how I went about creating a custom PHP condition using Dynamic Content for Elementor. There are some code snippets involved, and you can find them on the Elementor 360 website in the text version of this video. Dynamic Content for Elementor has a visibility extension that provides a large number of ways to conditionally display sections and widgets. Each of these types provides different sets of variables and conditions that can be used, which together provide an insanely long list of conditional display options, unmatched by any Elementor add-on, or for that matter, probably any page builder. It's one of the plugin's pillars of strength. I did an overview of the visibility options in a previous video, but in this one I'm focusing on the custom condition option. A reader recently left a comment on one of my posts with a how-to question. He also found me on Facebook and joined the new dynamic WordPress group. I was able to get some details from him on what he was trying to do. He has the users fill out a profile form when they join the site, but not all fields are required so as to get users on board quickly. After they join, when they log in, they go to a custom dashboard page. On their dashboard, he wants to show a button if their profile is not complete and hide that button if they've already filled everything out. He's using Fluent Forms for his front-end sign-up form and advanced custom fields to add extra fields for his profile custom post type. I suggested he add a Profile Complete field using an ACF True False field type and then use conditional logic to mark the profile complete if all the fields have a value, but incomplete if any fields were not filled in. He told me he was using Elementor and dynamic content for Elementor in creating his pages, so the challenge is to use the visibility option to show or hide the complete profile button based on the value of the profile complete field. I'm not showing how to create the form in this tutorial. I have here a test site using the free page builder framework theme and I've got several plugins installed. I have custom post type UI for creating the profiles custom post type and advanced custom fields the free version for adding fields to that. Then I have Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. I'm not using Elementor Pro in this video. And then I have the Elementor add-on dynamic content for Elementor installed. I've also added the BugFoo console debugger. This is a plugin that lets you output PHP variables into the Chrome console window. And we'll see how that works. So here's the CPT UI. And let's take a look at the profiles custom post type. You can see that the name is Profile. This is the name of the custom post type in the database. And then I pretty much went with the defaults, except that I added it that it has an archive, and then check some of these items here. Then for custom fields, I added a field group called Profile Fields which I have show on the profile custom post type. And then I added three fields, first name, last name, and a profile complete field. We can see this is a field type true false, a Boolean field, and that the field name in the database is profile underscore complete. Then this bug foo, console debugger, these are the instructions here. And basically you just use this syntax, which is what we'll use where you say bug foo, double colon log, and then your PHP variable. Okay, and now here let's go look at our profile. I've created one. 
Let's look at it in the editor. Here's the title. This is the post body. But here are our custom fields, first name, last name, and then kind of holding it up there. There's our profile complete field, and we see that it's false. It's saying that it's not complete, but it is. Our first name and last name are filled out, so we're going to mark this complete. So it's marked complete, and we'll save that. And now let's go to our Elementor page. So I've created a page called Profile Test, and I added a heading, and in the heading I used a token, which is the user display name. This is the logged in username in WordPress. And I used the advanced option to add the word welcome in a space before it. And I output the user display name here because in our challenge, we're going to want to show the profile of the logged in user. So this might be useful. Now I also added an edit profile button and I put that into its own section. Okay, and then dynamic content for Elementor adds this visibility tab. If you want to add some conditional display options, then you enable this. Get a long list of ways that you can conditionally display your content. Our display mode is to show, and then there are different kinds of triggers you can create. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these because I did do another video on this where I went through these. But what I'm going to focus on is this custom condition. And if we look at the custom condition, it, the instructions are write a function that returns a Boolean value. You can use all WordPress variables and functions. So if you want it to show, you return true. There is this option here that says prevent errors. And the tooltip on that says execute code externally in secure mode without throwing any possible fatal error. Note, if you want access to the current page data, and contacts, you need to disable this. And then there's a warning that you could cause an error on the page. Okay, so I've left this turned off then since we are going to be accessing the information on the current page. And since we're using this custom condition, I'm going to go up here and remove these other triggers. I'm just leaving the custom condition. And you can see that's removed all the other panels, and now we just have this one panel left. So I'm going to click Update. When programming, people often suggest, and I found that often helps, to write out some pseudocode or the steps in logic of what you're trying to accomplish ahead of time. So I listed out my plan. I want to return true to show the button or return false to hide the button. And first, I want to get the user ID of the logged in user. Do a query to find out if the logged in user has a profile record. If there's no profile record, then return true and show the button. If there is a profile record, then do some extra checks. Go and get the post ID of the profile record. And then do a query using the post ID to get the value of the profile complete field. If the value is true, indicating that the profile is complete, then return false and don't show the button. However, if the value is false, then show the button by returning true. Okay, so now let's put together our PHP code. WordPress has been around for a long time, and I found it's likely that any question we have has already been answered. So what I did is I did a Google search on WordPress, check if logged in user, as post. And the very first article returned from WordPress Stack Exchange, I found that it had the answer. It said, create an argument array. That's an array of the arguments you're going to pass into the query of the post type and the author, get current user ID, which is our current logged in user. Create a variable called WP posts and then use that WordPress function, get posts, and pass in these arguments. So that's perfect. That is exactly what I'm trying to do. So I went back to my page and I added in my code. 
Here's the code from the Stack Exchange article exactly as it is. And then I added our bug foo console logger to dump this variable. And then I added return true, which is what the instructions say, return a variable. That is to return a Boolean true false. And I found if I don't return a Boolean, then this code doesn't run and get output. So behind the scenes, there's a test to make sure a Boolean is being returned. All right, so I'm going to update this and then let's preview it. And I go here to the Chrome inspector and to the console output. And I see here is the bug foo output you see that it has dumped the variable WP posts. And here's the post ID, the post author, the date, the title, and so on. It doesn't have custom fields output. By default, WordPress doesn't do that. But we can see that our query is working. So what I'm doing here is I'm going step by step and verifying each step that the new code, that the code we're adding is working and doing what we want it to do. Now we need to go on to the second step in our pseudocode logic. We need to get the ID of the profile record. So again, I went and did a Google search. I searched for WordPress get post ID from WP query. And the second answer here, get post IDs from WP query. Again, from WordPress Stack Exchange. And someone was asking, is there a way I can retrieve an array of post IDs queried from a WP query? If we go down and look at the answers, the second answer here with the most upvotes tells us that you can add a fields parameter and specify the fields that you want returned in your query. And so it's saying add a parameter called fields with IDs. Then your query will return the post IDs. Okay, so now I go and modify this query. So I added this bit of code to specify the fields we want, which is IDs, the suggestion from the Stack Exchange article. I save that and now go back to our preview page and let's refresh that. Whoops, didn't add return true, let's update that. And look, it returns an array with one value, the ID, the post ID. So our code is working, that's great. The next step that we need to do is get the value of the advanced custom field profile complete. And surprise, surprise, I did another Google search, this time how to get ACF field value. The very first answer is from the advanced custom fields documentation. And it says use the advanced custom fields get field function. And it tells you what the parameters are. The first parameter is the field name. The second parameter is the post ID. And then the third parameter is whether to apply formatting logic. Now I modified the query one more time. And let's paste that in. Okay, so here we have our query with the fields IDs. And I add a variable now, is complete equals get field, the advanced custom field function. The field name is profile complete from the database. Then this is this variable here. And remember that it was a zero based array with one value. So I use this array syntax saying I want the first value from the array and then true because yes, I want the true false format to be returned. And then I output this variable is complete so that I can test that we're getting true or false and then return true. Okay, let's save that. And now let's go look at our profile test on the front end. And we can see that our function returns true. Okay, so that the profile complete field says true. Now let's complete our custom function now by showing or hiding the button based on the information we're receiving from our queries. 
Okay, so here's our query as it was before with the fields parameter to get the IDs. And now what I added here is this if condition. So count WP post, so the query. If there are some records returned, then we're going to go into this first block. If there are no records returned, then we're going to return true, which is show the button. Okay, so if there is no profile, we're going to show the button. But if there is a profile, then we're going to do some more checks. Here's our is complete get fields query from the last step. And now we're saying if is complete equals false, return true, show the button. Okay, so if the profile is not complete, show the button. If it is complete, then return false. Okay, so let's update that. And now let's go test on the front end. I took out the bug foo dump because we're not going to need it anymore. So our button's not showing, okay, because the profile is marked complete. Let's go back into the profile. We can see that it's marked complete. I'm going to uncheck it. So now it's no longer complete. Update. And now let's go back to the front end and refresh the page. And the button shows. Okay, great. So our custom condition, our custom PHP code is working. So to summarize and in conclusion, the custom condition option of dynamic content for Elementor takes some PHP code. As a programmer, I was pretty confident that I could piece together something that would do what was needed. If you're not a programmer, then you'll need to be willing to do a lot of research and testing to find code that works. That's why I showed using the BugFoo plugin to output the results to the Chrome console. I built the solution up step by step. This made it manageable and I could confirm that each step was working before going on to the next one. The WordPress codex is the ultimate list of all of the many built-in WordPress functions. There are a lot of them and they sometimes have subtle differences. That's why I usually start by Googling, and then if I have any questions, I go and check the codex. For example, here is the page for the git posts function that we used. If you read down that page, you'll see there are a lot of options, such as to pass in a category that we didn't use, and there's also at the bottom a lot of user added examples that can be helpful. I'm mentioning the codex because if you only rely on answers on Stack Exchange or other websites, you might miss some important information. Now, to bring it all back to dynamic content for Elementor, I think of the visibility extension as a power tool. It would be hard for a new WordPress user to understand it, and even an experienced user can make a mistake and cause an error, especially when adding custom PHP code. However, you can see that by allowing us to use our own PHP, we can create display conditions for almost anything you might need. This takes Elementor beyond being just a page builder and adds application-like functionality. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and my step-by-step -step recreation of the process I followed helps you when you're working on something similar. Did the steps make sense? Do you use a different process? Feel free to leave a comment below. Well, that's it for this video. There's a text version on the Elementor 360 website, along with other tutorials and resources. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.